and a trace me new life did he give me to my heart does my savior now live his love and a trace hi there it is so good to be here before you today i want to give you a little information about who i am my name is terry and I am married to Jason, who you see preaching most Sundays and Wednesdays on our channel. And it's just so good that you're here. We're very, very grateful and thankful that you're here watching today. Please be sure to give us a thumbs up. And if you have any questions, please put them in the comments below. And I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can. The goal is for me to do a fairly short teaching once a week. So we're going to give it a shot and see how it goes on the Kona Faith Center channel. God bless you. I'm going to start now with 2 Timothy 1.7. So you need your Bibles or your phone or wherever you read your scriptures. And the first one I'm going to read is from the New King James Version. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. I'm going to read the same scripture, 2 Timothy 1.17, from the Amplified Bible. For God did not give us a spirit of timidity or cowardice or fear, but he has given us a spirit of power and of love and of sound judgment and personal discipline, abilities that result in a calm, well-balanced mind and self-control. Wow, I like that amplified version. It really speaks to us, doesn't it? So we are three-part beings. We're spirit beings, and our spirit gets born again when we receive Jesus as our Lord and Savior. We live in a body, and we have a soul, and that's our mind, our emotions, and our will. Being fearless of the things of this world means having faith that cannot be deterred. And what does deterred mean? I am so glad somebody asked. Discouraged, dissuaded, prevented, daunted, or frightened. We don't want any of that, and we don't have to have any of that because of what Jesus has done for us. Isn't that awesome? Everybody give them a clap offering. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. But the key is we need complete trust in the Lord. Because without complete trust in the Lord Jesus, soulish fear is what rules a person's life. What a bummer. Been there. Glad I was delivered and healed by our Lord. Faith means trusting. Trusting what? No. It is trusting whom? God is the whom or the who, depending on how good you are in English. I'm not that great. I've been living in Hawaii for 39 years. Ha <laughs> ha. Faith is an action we take, never passive. It's not still. It's always a movement. It's an action. It's like a verb. We just jump in there and we are moving forward when we are walking in faith, walking by faith, walking through faith, walking with faith. So what does it mean? It, you may ask, what about when God says, wait? How is that active? Or if God says, not right now. Well, those actual behaviors that we choose to take in obedience to our Lord, the waiting is the action that we take. So we have to understand that it's not just based on do this or don't do that. Sometimes there is a wait because God's timing is perfect and we need to wait on God's timing. Faith is not just a thing. It enlists a person to be confident that all of God's promises are yes and amen and will, without any possible hindrance, come to pass. God's promises will not be hindered ever in our lives to come to pass. Knowing this fact, and it is a fact because it's in the Word of God, and the Word of God is eternal, it is forever settled in heaven, and it never changes. Isn't that great? Today is May 7th, 2020, and we're in the middle of this whole coronavirus thing, and things changed pretty quickly for you, didn't they? Well, I want to tell you that God does not change. God does not change. 
So faith is not just a thing. It enlists, it enlists a person to be very confident that all of God's promises are yes and amen. And knowing this allows us to gather the knowledge that what God says he will do. The person who trusts knows this even when he or she does not yet see that promise completed in the natural realm. Hebrews 11.1, 1. and I'm going to read this verse from the Complete Jewish Bible. And I want to give a little plug in here for Bible Gateway, because you could go on Bible Gateway, there is no cost, and you could look up any scripture in any translation. And it's really a nice program if you don't have the money or want to spend the money on an actual program that would give you more information, but Bible Gateway works great. I do it every morning when I'm reading my Bible, I use it. So Hebrews 11.1 1 from the CJB says, Trusting is being confident of what we hope for, convinced about the things that we do not see. Hope is so important in faith. We have to see it with our spirit being, not with our natural being, for it to be hope. And I'm going to read it now from the Amplified. Now faith is the assurance or the title deed and confirmation of things to hope for. These are divinely guaranteed. Isn't that awesome? And the evidence of things not seen. Some translations say not yet seen, inferring that we will see those promises. That's what walking in faith does for us. And the con they are the conviction of their reality. Faith comprehends this fact, what cannot be experienced by the physical senses. And it is so important to know this because we can't rely on our physical senses to be able to have faith in God, nor to walk in the ways of God, nor to pursue the plans of God. It is not our will, our emotions, our mind, and our body that are going to direct us properly to that place where God wants us to be, which is the absolute best place in the world, because it's the place of blessing. And so I want to encourage you to really understand this and dig deep if you don't yet and listen to good word on it. Study it out yourselves is the best thing to do, to know that we need to be led by the Spirit, led by the Spirit. Hallelujah. So going back to not having a spirit of fear, one needs to understand that this can only be lived out by completely completely, thoroughly trusting God. We know God has not given us fear, so let's look at what he has given us. I don't like thinking about what I didn't get for my birthday. I like thinking about all the good things I got. So let's look at the good things that God has for us. Number one, I'm going to talk about the three things in that scripture. Number one is power. And I want to define power a little bit. Power, some synonyms are control, influence, authority, supremacy, rule, command, clout, muscle, sway, dominance, dominion, sovereignty, ability, capacity, faculty, potential, and capability. This is what God gives us instead of fear. He gives us his power to operate through us. And I mean, who could be more powerful than God Almighty? Hallelujah. The one, the very one by his spirit who raised our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ from the dead, making him the first fruit so that we can follow into eternal life, those of us who believe. I'm going to now read from Luke 10, 19, Luke 10, 19, in the complete Jewish Bible. And 1019 says, remember, I have given you authority so you can trample down snakes and scorpions. Indeed, all, A-L-L, -L, and that's for my friend BJ, all the enemy's forces. And you will remain completely unharmed. How's that for a promise? I love that promise. And I want to give a little testimony here. None of the people of Kona Faith Center have contracted 
the COVID V, nor have any of their family members. And I just praise God for that. I thank you, Lord, that we are faith walkers and faith talkers, and that we could stand in your presence and know that harm is not coming to us, that you are taking care of the enemy on our behalf. And we give you the glory and praise, Jesus. And we are not going to get egotistical or arrogant about this because we know pride comes before a fall. But we just want to come into thanksgiving with you, Father God. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Acts 1.8 from God's Word, that's Acts 1.8, says, But you, that's you, that's every single one of you who can hear my voice, who is watching me, even those that can't. This is the word of God for all who believe. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes to you. Then you will be my witnesses to testify about me. This is Jesus talking in Jerusalem, throughout Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Do you know that we in Hawaii say that we are at the ends of the earth? Because it's just halfway around the world to get to Israel to get to that place that he talks about initially. And I know that because the time difference is 12 hours and I've flown there three times and flown back three times. So I want to tell you, it this is the remotest parts. This is halfway around the world. This is the ends of the earth. Glory to God. I'm going to read now from the Complete Jewish Bible, Ephesians 3, 20 to 21. Now to him who by his power working in us is able to do far beyond anything, new word BJ, anything or whatever us we can ask or imagine. Hallelujah. He can do anything that we could ever even think about or imagine. So you see by the Spirit, and we have the Holy Spirit abiding us if we have Jesus in our lives, we can know the mind of Christ. We can do the things of God. We can be empowered to do those things because he's actually working in us. There are so many scriptures on the power that Jesus gave us as his believers. And I encourage you to do a Bible study this week and look these things up. The power and the love and the sound mind. And now we're going to talk about that second thing, love. One of my favorite. You alone, Lord, made me a brand new creation. It is only by your Spirit could this have been done.